Okay, I said um, yesterday we were discussing um, QuickBooks, how to get familiar with the system. And I tried to share how our course outline will be, some of the things we are going to discuss during the course of the training. And I asked if there are questions on areas that I want us to treat and all that. So after I collected your feedback, I went down, I went back and I developed a course outline on what we are going to discuss today. So it will be broken down into two. The first section will be for setup, then the second section is transaction. Now, when I say setup, there is no how you can enter a sales transaction into the system. There is no how if you can enter an expense transaction on the system if your bank account is not there, if your customer is not there. So you need to first learn how to take care of the foundation. The foundation is if I make a sale or if I want to record a revenue or money that will end from our crude oil, how do I record it in the system? But before you record that, what are the foundation of a sale? The first one is that the customer must be on that system because you cannot sell to just anybody. You have to sell to someone. So in the first, in the course, uh, the course of this training, the first thing we will discuss is how do we set up our clients? Definitely, every business, no matter how big or small you are, you will, you must be selling something before you can make money. That's the truth. It's either you're selling a product or you're selling a service. But the truth is that you must sell something to make money. That's first thing in business. Even though your business is not really selling to the public or selling to a special kind of people, the truth is that you're selling something before you make money. And all that. Even the whole country as a whole, if you look at it, before Nigeria can make money, Nigeria will sell something. And we already know that what we make our money from is from oil. So every business or any outfit that makes money must be selling something. Except you are an NGO where your, most of your income are from donation. That's the one that can be exempted from that particular fact. So now in, in doing that, the first setup we'll discuss now is how do we set up our clients? How do we set up our customers? One thing you must note, because I'm looking at your line of business, when you sell, it's either you sell in Naira or you sell in dollars. Am I correct? Because it's possible that you could be exporting the crude oil and all that. So in setting up your customer, here are the steps to take. When you look at this dashboard here, you will see where we have the customers. This customer is a center, is a, is a place where you will manage all your customer. When I say manage your customer, I mean where you can add new customer, you can edit a customer, and you can delete a customer. But if it's a customer that has an outstanding balance, if it's a customer that is owing before, you cannot delete on the system. You understand? So there is control in accounting. Even though you can delete a customer from the system, you cannot delete a customer with a balance. Because if you allow that, there's no control. A business that is having a customer list of people that are owing, and someone can easily come in to delete a customer, that means it's possible for someone to sideline the money. But if the customer balance is zero, you can delete a customer. So on this customer center now, this is where you have the list of all your clients. Though I'm stressing this because from the report, I see that there is no figure in the revenue, but it's still very important for me to discuss it. Now to do that, you will go to new, you see new customer. This is where you add your new customer. It's very, very important. Now, in this section, I'm going to discuss two facts. The first one is how to add a customer. The second one is how to add a project. Because we mentioned a project yesterday too. So first, how to add a customer. When you click new customer, this is window that will appear. Now, this window is very, very important. First one is the customer name. Now, let's assume that we have a country abroad that will export crude oil, that will sell to you. Let's say the country is in UK, and know of the country is XYZ Limited. Now, what we'll enter here as the name of the customer is XYZ Limited. Now, a very important thing we need to look at is, when we do business with this customer, does this customer pay us in Naira or in dollars? Oh, he's based abroad. That means we are going to be doing a foreign currency. So here you will now select currency, US dollar, depending. If it's another currency, you click view more currency. Here you will see all the currencies. So if it's in dollars, you come here, you click US dollar. What this means is that anytime I want to sell, immediately I select XYZ, system will pick it that I want to create a foreign invoice. So all the currency there in that invoice will turn to dollars. That's what this means. 
But if I leave it in Naira, it means that anytime I select this customer, the currency that will appear is Naira. So that means that you need to be very, very sure of the currency that this customer is. But if it's a customer that pay you in both Naira and Dollar, you need to set them up separately. You have XYZ Naira, XYZ Dollar. That's if it's the same company. So when you set this up, then you click OK. If you click OK, it's already added on the system. Now, to be sure that anytime we want to create an invoice for this customer, the transaction will be in dollars. When you go to home and click create invoice, here. It's loading. And click create invoice. Immediately, if you look at it very well, you'll see that this is Naira. Once I come here, and I select XYZ Limited here. You see what happened? It has changed to dollars. The reason is because I selected dollars as a currency for this customer. So this is very, very important. So anytime you're setting up a customer, you need to ask, do we sell to this customer in Naira or in dollars? There might be local companies that buy from us and pay us in Naira. We can also set up those ones up too. To do that, you do the same thing. You go to your customer when you go to customer you select new new customer when you select new customer you enter the name let's assume we have a company like dangote that buys from us so here now the currency is in naira you leave it in naira then you click ok all that so here you will see you have different customers in naira and in dollars this is very very important any question Okay, now this active customer here, it's, you know, when you have a customer on the list, there are customers that may have been long, they, they actually bought from you or they did business with you. Some customer are like, ah, this customer has been long ago, are they still existing at all? You understand? So when you look at them, it may be that the customer is no longer doing business with you or the customer is not, maybe for, uh, it's been long and all that. You can render them inactive. If I click, right click on this place, now you can see a place where they say make inactive. I'm trying to find it here. Okay, you can see make customers or job inactive. When you make it inactive, it will be hidden from here. Oh, my spelling from this faculty is not correct. So active customers are people that are still active. With you, that means they still do business with you to your current dates. Yes, 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 yes. That's why it's on the system. That's how you make normally you would have used delete. Delete will take it off completely. Yeah, you know, if yes. If, if it doesn't have any balance, mm -hmm. you can make it inactive. If you also if it has balance, you can also make it inactive, but the figure will still be showing in your report. Making it native does not mean the figure will go off. No. The figure will still be showing. Unless it's been confirmed that, oh, we can't recover this money again. If this particular debt is bad, then you will now write it off. It's the balance you will write off. Maybe based on management approval and all that. But if tomorrow you recover the debt again, you can still the bad debts recovered and all that. They are still possible. So this is for customer. Very, very important. Now, if we now have a project that we are that, that is currently on, a project that we are doing, now we can now come here. You see, add job. But before you add job, the first thing you need to do is you need to add a name called project. You need to add a name called project. At times, that project can sometimes when you do this drilling project, do you do it on behalf of or for a client? No, they do it for the drilling. Oh, sorry. Drilling. Mm. Okay, con okay, contractors that does that project for you, yeah. you know that. Okay. 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 What will happen is that if we have those contractors that are doing those projects for you, now the idea of it is that let's come down to this section. Yeah. 
trying to set up something. We have our job. Now, this is the project name. This is our job. Now, this our job is like a project. That's what this our job is. It's like a project. When I have projects like this, if I have project like this, then there are two methods I'm going to show you on how to do it. And this particular thing that I'm doing now is being recorded. So I'm recording the screen and all that. So you have projects. Let me call it, let me be specific. Drilling. Then you can click OK. Now, anytime you are incurring an expenses, you are paying your contractor, then this will be basically on transaction, which will be tomorrow and all that. So I just want to demonstrate something. Yeah. Let me first create a bank. Now, anytime you are paying a contractor, anytime you are paying a contractor on this window, this is where you now assign it to a project. When you click this, this is where you'll be able to select drilling. So, what that means is that if we are paying the contractor, we can say, oh, this expense is in respect of this drilling project. But when we get, when we get to transaction, I will explain that better. And all that. So, let's take a gradual step. Let's just uh, finish the first setup. So, this is for customer. Or client, any question on that? Yes, setting up a customer. Now, another thing is that assuming these clients are owing me before, because the one I did here were people that are not owing me, and even they are owing me before, this is how I will set them up. The same way I added a customer, then new, new customer. Now, let's pick another company, ABC Limited. Now, Assuming the customer is owing me opening balance in Nara, opening balance in Nara, this is where we we'll enter it here. Very, very important too. So now, on this opening balance here, let me explain the opening balance. We actually sold a product worth of 10 million naira to a customer. Come on, sir. We sold a product uh, worth of 10 million naira to a customer. And the question paid us seven million naira. Our opening balance is three, not seven. The opening balance is the amount remaining as at the beginning of this setup. So you did a transaction before the setup, what of ten million, and the person has paid you seven million. So if I'm setting that person up here as a client, what we appear as opening balance is three. Because that's the am amount the person is here to remit. So that when I check my customer receivable balance, what will appear there will be 3 million. So they are able to see how much are these people owing me. So if we get to a report, you will see a report that says customers who owe me money. It will show you a list of customers and the amount they are yet to pay you. This is where the system picks that figure. But if you enter 7 million as the amount the person has paid you, you will be wrong. Because instead of showing it as if 7 million naira is outstanding. So the opening balance of a customer is the amount the customer is yet to pay you. Okay, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. There are some, some companies there that um, pay advance. Okay. They give advance for this thing now. Before you even switch on, people for them now. They've already paid their advance. In advance. It's just, yes, the only difference now is just a sign. If they pay you in advance, just add minus in front. If I enter 3 million naira, hmm, this shows that the customer is owing me. If I want to indicate to the system that this money, the person has paid this, this money in advance, and I'm here to sell to the person, which means the person has a credit with me, the reason I need to enter is minus. Let's demonstrate that. We will use two scenarios, one with minus, other one without minus, so that we'll see how it works. Now, the first one is 3 million naira. You come here, you click okay if i click okay here you can see this is three million is showing as invoice which means i'm yet to collect the money the amount is owing me now let's now add another customer with minus and see how it works let me find a better company now if i add minus three million here and click okay 
you see the difference? It's showing credit memo, meaning that the person has a credit with you. If I click the first three million, you can see that it's showing invoice. So that negative is very important. That's a very good question. Same thing for suppliers too. By the time we start adding our contractors, system will ask us, do we have any opening balance? So the opening balance with contractors, who is our supplier, are the amount we are owing them. Why the opening balance for customer are the amount they are owing us? But if we now add minus in that balance for contractor, what it means is that there is an amount we have paid those contractor in advance. Just the way we did for this. The only difference is just minus. So when you have an advance payment, enter minus. But you can only do this for opening balance setup. Only. When after, this can only apply if the transaction has occurred before this QuickBook setup. But if after QuickBook setup, now that we have entered QuickBook setup now, and the customer now gives us money in advance, you don't have to come here and add the customer again. If it's a customer that is already on the system, all you need to do is receive payments. When we go to that show, like I said, I will explain that better. System is asking me to reboot. Can I restart the system? Do you have anything to save? Because I saw some files open. So I need to check. It's asking me to reboot. Though it's part of the installation, when you restart it, you continue automatically. So it's very important that we note that invoice and credit memo when you put negative that negative is very important you may look at it and say ah negative is a small thing same thing but you can see the difference you can make in your reports adding a negative in front of a customer balance means that the customer has a credit with you he has paid you in advance before adding a credit for a contractor balance which is the next one we'll go to means that you have paid the contractor in advance like and say oh come and do this project for us take money the person is yet to deliver. We've already paid the person money. It's an advance payment. And I'll also show us how to clear those advance payments. Maybe later on, if the customer has delivered, uh, if the customer now requests, or has supply me the product that I paid you for, how to clear that advance payment. The way it works is that when you now finally sell the product to that customer, when you raise an invoice and select that customer, system will tell you that that customer has a credit. Do you want to apply this invoice on this credit, if you say yes, two things will happen. System will match the value on that invoice against what the customer paid you. If what is on the invoice is less than what the customer paid you, the remaining balance will still be credit. But if what is on the invoice is more than what the customer paid you, that means the customer has amount to pay back. But if what is on the invoice is equal to the credit, automatically becomes zero. All right. These are things we demonstrate when we get to say side. So it's the basic foundation of the setup. It's what that's what we're trying to clear. Just click yes. Start the system. Okay. Uh, in this, uh, um, when you want to do setup, mm -hmm. you have to have the opposition of your very own parasitic lines. Yes, sir. Which you will now use that to create the balance oh, sheet. Yes. yes. Yes, into your, into your system. Now, in the, those balance sheets. Normally, the, the core balance sheet must balance. Mm -hmm. We are the system, they, they will create a, a kind of line. It automatically, yeah. To, uh, to help to balance. Yes, it. yes. Okay. Um, the thing I wanted to ask now is that, because most of the time now, because the level we are, we are not in operations yet, we want to make sure we get our balance sheet right. Initially, I told them to go as far back as 2014. Mm. But I feel that doing that may be a bit problematic. What do you think? Do they just do take the balance sheet positions as at 2016? I think that uh, after the auditor has completed and said this is the position. Yes, my advice is this in quickbooks when you're doing setup we have what we call conversion dates conversion dates is the date you're migrating from your normal accounting system to quickbooks and there are two dates it's either you pick today's dates or you pick an opening balance date 
Now, when you say today's date, today's date is saying that you can select any date. Like the option you opted for initially, which is at the end of 2014, is today's date. What that means is that you can select any date that back up. But when you select beginning of the balance year date, what the system will look at, it will look at your financial year and pick out the balance as at the end of previous year. Now, if we are picking 2016, the advantage is that, number one, you will pick your recent balances. Number two, in so terms of will be less. yes, in terms of data entry, the work will be less and all that. Now, if you are going to pick 2014, by the time you start entering transactions that has occurred between 2014 up to now, what you need to validate your entry is your bank balance. If what the system said you have in the bank is equal to what you have in the bank truly, then you can move on. But if what you have well, in the system, the little experience I had when I was in that, it's sometimes very difficult. It's very very. Because the, your bank balance will begin to play they, all kinds of exactly. Of this that will that make you now begin to request your bank statement and stand checking. Uh, and that's a lot of check, Sometimes still there are the certain things that doesn't just change. Yes. Uh, but it will just be throwing in balancing mm. figure for you. Yes. Yes, that's what we are doing. These are the this is the foundation of the setup. What we are doing now is these are the items. These are setup that will eventually fix the balance sheet. Like example, okay, we are opening all the customers. Names. Yes, which will form the receivables in the balance sheet. Mm. So because like I said, you can't enter receivables. Now, how do you open bank? That's bank that. That's after we are voting to contractor. Well, this is part of this um, training here. The bank account here. If we are setting up our bank, you can see we have the bank. When you click continue, yeah, this is where you enter the name of the bank. If it's a dumb account or an error account, you select here. Yeah. Okay. So if it's a dumb account, you select dollars. And when you select dollars, at the point of entry, the opening balance, you need to enter the exchange rates. Who the system will pick to report it in your balance sheet in Naira okay. and all that. So as the exchange rate changes. So that means if I say if we are going to have to go and check what exchange rates are at that point. Exactly. Exactly. So as the exchange is changing, as you're updating it, system. I tried to get to this paper. I was telling you something like petty cash, whatever this is. Hey, if that petty cash is just like a guide to tell you the kind of, you know, petty cash and bank accounts and cash on hand, they always have similar. Yeah. Exactly. So that's this way. This is the area you were talking about. Let me go back again. Wonder what did you click for this? Yes, chart of account. This chart of account. Yes. When you right click on chart of account, new, bank. new, you see bank here. Okay, okay. When you click bank, this one now are just idea of the kind of account you can create. Okay. Just click continue. When you click continue, this is where you now enter the account name. Now we can also create sub accounts. You can have more than a bank account in the bank, savings and current. So we can also do that here. These are things that that's that's the foundation of the setup. Because you can't enter any transaction if you don't understand this basic Maybe, yeah. setup. So that's what we are doing gradually and all that. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so. Alright, so let's continue. Now, the. I think where we stopped was a um, issue of customers with balances. And I explained how to enter the customer with credit and the ones without credit. Very important. Do we have any question on that? Any question? Okay, let's move to the next one, which is the contractor setup. And all that so um sorry what i'm going to do is that i want to pause this video and create a new one of course for each sections i want to create a video for each section so that it will be easy